What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. This video is long overdue. Uh, I already did my videos on the first semester of grad school and the second semester of grad school and I already finished my third semester in the fall, last fall. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm in my fourth semester so uh, it's about time that I make this video. So let's just jump into it. What courses did I take? What am I teaching or what did I teach? And then what happened on the research front? All right, so let's start with the courses. So I already told you what I was going to take in a separate video. Uh, now I just wanna review uh, the courses, tell you what I learned and how they went. So the first one was machine learning, uh, which was a graduate level course on machine learning, but it was still an introduction. We went through uh, K-nearest neighbors, naive bays, support vector machines, uh, all the basics of machine learning. We went through deep learning. We went through convolutional neural networks. Uh, we did some principal component analysis. Basically everything in machine learning was in this course. And there was a homework portion, which was sort of half theory, half uh, applications in Python and some PyTorch, which is a library for machine learning. There was also a final project where you would form a group with some peers of yours, and then you would do a project on either an implementation track or an application track or a research track. So in my group, uh, I work with my physicist friends uh, in my cohort. We decided to implement a technique that we write in a paper to various areas of physics, basically cosmology and particle physics. And so at the end of the semester, we submitted our final project. And it turns out that the instructors actually really liked it. And they asked us if they could show it to future students, which was um, really nice to, to see. All right, so the second course was particle physics two. Uh, and here we learned about quantum chromodynamics, which is the theory of the interactions between quarks and gluons via the, star, the strong force. And we basically learned about factorization and uh, at what energy scales or time scales are you allowed to say probe a nucleus. Uh, because so if you look at the naive picture of say a proton, then you have three quarks and they're bound together by gluons, but really each quark uh, is emitting other gluons and these gluons are sort of splitting into more quarks and those quarks are splitting into more gluons. So you have basically a whole mess of quarks and gluons uh, inside of a proton, inside of a neutron. So it turns out that protons or neutrons are really much more complicated than what they depict them in textbooks. And then we also learned about how to deal with next to leading order corrections of a particular perturbative process. So it turns out, like I've mentioned several times, is that if you do quantum field theory, you end up with infinities popping up all over the place. Uh, but it turns out that there are theorems that tell you that these infinities actually cancel, so you never end up with them in your final answer. We also touched upon some experimental things with quantum chromodynamics, uh, the biggest thing being jets. So when you have a collision, you end up with some, a lot actually, of uh, quarks and gluons just going up in a, in a jet fashion. And then those quarks and gluons hadronize, so they make protons and neutrons, and they make other baryons or mesons, like a pi, a pi plus, pi minus, and then your detector will detect these hadrons, and so you have to sort of work back to see, to understand this collision. The second main topic in particle physics was neutrino physics, and here we touched upon Majorana versus Dirac neutrinos, uh, why both are possible in theory, um, and what the differences between them are. What, what sort of different predictions do they end up giving you? We also talked about the mixing matrix and how you can have uh, neutrino oscillations as well. We also talked about how these neutrino oscillations will appear in different uh, environments. So for example, neutrinos coming from the sun have a different signature than neutrinos coming from say a nuclear reactor, uh, which are different than neutrinos coming from uh, the atmosphere. So each source of neutrinos is going to give you a different signature and the job of experiments is to detect these, these differences and try to build up the picture to see which model of neutrinos is right. So overall, I think both of these classes were pretty, pretty amazing because they're uh, fundamental to my research and I actually learned quite a lot in both of them. So on the machine learning front, um, I learned, I learned, you know, basically everything, uh, besides the things that I had to teach myself beforehand. And then in particle physics, um, yeah, it was, it was basically all new stuff um, because it was advanced quantum chromodynamics, advanced neutrino physics, uh, stuff that you normally would not learn about either in undergrad or in a first semester of particle. All right, so that was it for classes. Of course, let me know what classes you're taking or have taken uh, in your last semester. Now I move on to teaching. So typically in my first year, I taught the intro physics labs, uh, which were the mechanics labs and the electromagnetism labs. But this time around, I saw an offer by the astronomy department and they were they needed 
a GSI or a TA, a teacher's assistant in astronomy. And so I said, you know, why not? Let me try that. Let me uh, see what I can do in, in the astro department. So I did end up teaching astronomy and I noticed that it was uh, a lot more chill to teach in the astronomy department than it was to teach the intro physics labs. Uh, it was just much easier to grade things. Um, the labs were easier to deal with. So overall, I really enjoyed teaching in the astro department uh, compared to teaching the intro labs in physics. But now that I'm a second year, it means my first year fellowship is over, which means I have to teach 20 hours a week instead of uh, 10 hours a week, which was the usual for my first year. That means a lot of my time is just going to go into grading a lot of labs or a lot of homework problems, which honestly sucks, sucks a lot. Uh, but you know, you got to get paid somehow. And in fact, uh, I really like teaching in the astro department that right now I'm, I'm also teaching in the astro department, uh, which I, I think is going pretty well. All right, finally on the research front, um, I already made a video right here about the prelim exam and I told you that I already passed it. So now I'm a PhD candidate and I already talked about what all that means. So now I am basically devoted to research. Uh, this semester, I'm not taking any classes. In fact, I'm mostly devoted to teaching and research. And so hopefully I can get a lot more done uh, in, this, in this semester. So that's it for this video. Tell me how your semesters were. Tell me what courses you took. Uh, if you had to teach, what were you teaching? Um, if you were learning something new, if you're doing research, if you're applying to REUs and stuff like that, uh, maybe you're getting accepted to grad schools right now. Please let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.